ignition. Stand by. From the Draco Vista Studios in Phoenix, Arizona. All systems stable. Take one. Dude, our brains have to be broken to do this. <laughs> well, I guess golf is better than Lake Placid, too. Oh, okay. Do we have Whovian news here? You say geek like it's a bad thing. Flash. Stop. Oh. Stop, <laughs> it. Oh, Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> and now the news. Think science fiction has nothing to do with your life? What? Think again. It's Slice of Sci-Fi. Roll sound. Hello and welcome again to another Slice of Sci-Fi. This is the podcast for all things science fiction, all the things you love. I am Tim Adamick. Welcome to episode one. I'm Michael Arman and Gary. <laughs> in, in no one, it's episode 301. Three, 301. 301. <laughs> I are Brian Brown. I'm uh, Sam Roberts, and I'm I'm really starting to come to the conclusion that I'm the only one here that can count. Glad you showed up tonight, aren't you? <laughs> we regressed. Thrilled beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> he started it. That's it's all your it. fault, Meningay. That is my fault. It's yeah. all usual. my fault. That's for sure. I tell you what, it's uh, it's all downhill from here. It is. It yeah. is. I mean, we hit yeah. episode 300, mm-hmm. and it's 301, and we're basically we're done. Yeah. We, we pretty much we've done everything that we can do. There's we've nothing peaked. left. We're just Pe- coasting now. Absolutely. I mean, the content. I mean, we're, roll know. the Shark Tank in. It's all <laughs> over. We're jumping. Oh. There's a trampoline and a Shark Tank, and we're ready to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. I get the water skis. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Why don't we talk about contests? Yes, because we have those. Okay. If you've, we've got a few more days left to win a copy of the second half of the final season of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea on DVD. If you love this classic Irwin Allen series or are just looking for a way to get into one of the icons of 60s sci-fi television, this three-disc, 13-episode set is a must-have. You know, that makes us look like such chintzies. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like the second half of the final season. <laughs> three discs half. and 13 episodes. Back then, seasons were long. I'm just yeah. saying. Well, season one sucked anyway. We peaked already again in the contest as well. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's all over but from what here. If, what if people want it? What if people are asking themselves, how can you get it? How can you get it, Well, Sam? it's easy, Brian. Send your name, mailing address, and the secret code phrase we gave you in last week's how to... Yeah. Last week's show, there's an S missing, by yeah. the way. Last to, week's how. Last, last week's <laughs> how. <laughs> to contest at sliceofsci-fi.com. And but then I'll get it? Awesome. Do not cool. forget. No, you don't get anything. Oh. Um, oh. One entry per person, period. Okay. I say that because it's in all caps with an exclamation point. Wow. Period. <laughs> okay, okay. Multiple Got entries it. will disqualify you from the contest in future contests. And please make sure that once we close a contest, you stop Sending entries, please, oh. please. <laughs> While Cease. email can do many great things, it cannot go back in time. Please. Lies. Insist. It can go back in time. I know it can. It's quantum entangled with last week. Yes. It's awesome. Not our email. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your email, but not like the show. I don't know. Email. Sometimes when I get slices of I email, it's been days since it was sent. <laughs> Spook- so. Spooky action on the server? What? Yeah. yeah. And speaking of icons of genre television, the Tuning Into Sci-Fi television podcast is counting in on the top 100 shows as voted by their listeners. And of course, of Doctor Who's not number one, Hickerson. Hickerson revolts. Yeah. So if you'd like to hear you what they're doing on uh, tuning into sci fi, go over there, take a look at them. Mm-hmm. They're at tuning into sci fi tv.com. And of course, we have a multitude of other podcasts at farpointmedia.com. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's going to be a great show today. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. Woo-hoo. I'm quantum entangled with my scotch. Nice. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> You're Lemmy? Wow. Lemmy. Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. You know, if it wasn't for, like, the boil yourself. on his face, I'd be all over being Lemmy, because that's got to be entertaining as hell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I read somewhere that he had an interview one time where somebody asked him why he never did anything about that, and he's like, why should I still get laid? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking Lemmy. He's like, I'm uglier than sin, and I still get the chicks. Wow. Yeah. He is. I mean, he's an ugly, he's an ugly man. Yes, but he's, he's Lemmy. Yes, yeah, Lemmy, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Iggy Pop, kind of the same way. <laughs> Have you seen Iggy Pop when he takes his shirt off? Now he's got oh, like yeah. rolls. Oh, God. Yeah, like, yeah, really? Yeah, loose God. flesh. Yeah. That's because he's, he's not old. performing live anymore. No, he's still cut, but he's just getting old and yeah. it's getting oh, hangy. Oh, saggy. Saggy. Saggy skin. Nice. No, he, he I, I really do think <laughs> that he's undead and he's just run out of skin suits to wear. <laughs> 
he's one of those that really like I love him. I think he's fabulous. Oh, yeah. But he really should have died of an overdose like twenty years ago. Oh yeah. yeah. Thirty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but much like Keith Richards. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately he's not taking the same stuff Keith Richards is because he's nowhere near he's as well, well preserved. I <laughs> know. We were that's funny because we were yeah. just watching the stones on uh we we were in Fry's today and we stepped into the theater and they had the stones on and it's like, Wow, Richards is just he just looks the same. Yeah, yeah. he never cha- he Craggy. never changes. Yeah, you know who he gets. Yeah. You know who he gets his drugs from? Who? Satan. Dick, Dick Clark. Oh, <laughs> oh, there that we go. Explains a lot. That's it. Mm. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Positions, everyone. And now the news. And as always, it's time for some news Game because news. that's why you tune in. Yes, and it's a topic we love to talk about around mm-hmm. here. When 3D films first made their resurgence in theaters, audience members voted in the only way Hollywood cares about, with their moolah. Mm -hmm. Sales for 3D films were solid, with studios seeing a significant profit margin for them. And of course, that meant that soon, just about every studio was rushing to try and get a 3D (laughs) film to screen (laughs) and to up-convert every project into 3D at the promise of higher ticket sales. I call shenanigans. Ah, the teat of Hollywood. Oh, but wait for it. You would not be the only one. Mm-hmm. As the glut of 3D films has hit theaters, audience and critical enthusiasm has waned. Of course. Oh. Ticket sales are down overall in Hollywood, and even 3D films aren't immune. And critics aren't making any bones about whether the 3D in films works. It doesn't. Recently, respected critic Roger Ebert oh. criticized The Green Hornet for its 3D, leading to one of the most respected film editors and sound designers, Walter Murch, to write back saying why 3D never would work. He's the guy yep. who won an Oscar, yeah. I think, for Apocalypse Now. Right. Yes. Oh, he's awesome. Murch says that because of the darker, smaller image associated with creating 3D images, strobing can and will occur more easily on 3D films. And because this effect is part of the human brain and not linked to better glasses or technology, there's little Hollywood can do about mm-hmm. it. Right. But that's not the biggest issue 3D can't and never will overcome rights merch, and I'm quoting now. But the deeper problem is that the audience must focus their eyes at the plane of the screen, say it's 80 feet away, he says. But their eyes must converge at perhaps 10 feet away, then 60 feet, then 120 feet, and so on, depending on what the illusion is. Mm-hmm. So 3D films require us to focus at one distance and converge at another. And 600 million years of evolution has never presented this problem before. See, All living things with eyes have always focused and converged at the same point. See, now, his whole mm-hmm. problem is is he's not thinking about this in the right way. All you have to do is go get your eyes replaced with Hollywood-approved eyes. Oh. That's it. Well, then, I'll get right on yeah, that. Yeah, but the problem is the, you know, the DMA on them. They're just, you know. Yeah, the hard. DRM. Yeah. Well, you, you can't see driving into work, but you can yeah. watch that damn movie. Exactly. That's My right. new TV is 3D, like, you know, all Priorities. capable. And I'm like, yay. Yeah, it, it, it's so we we we've said this months ago. It, it's done. It's over. Yes. It's dead. It will but, die a, a horrible death, just like every other time they've tried to bring but, it. But, but now there's like a, a a nice semi-scientific reason why, as opposed to we just instinctively hate it. When we're has smart Hollywood people. paid attention to science? <laughs> but it, it's not about them. So it's because of this issue that 3D films featuring a lot of action just won't work, says Merch. The editing of 3D films cannot be as rapid as for 2D films. Because of the shifting of convergence, right. it takes a number of milliseconds for the brain eye to get what the space of each shot is and adjust. And he also, and this is the part I love, takes on the question of 3D becoming more immersive than 2D films. Mm-hmm. 3D films remind the audience that they are in a certain perspective relationship to the image merch rights. It's almost a Brechtian trick. Whereas if the film story has really gripped an audience, they are in the picture in a kind of dreamlike spaceless space. Mm -hmm. Right. So a good story will give you more dimensionality than you can ever cope with. Absolutely. And I'm going to say it again just in case James Cameron is listening. Are you ready, James? This is for you. A good story will give you more (laughs) dimensionality than you can ever cope with. Absolutely. Okay. So dark, small, stroby, headache-inducing, alienating, and expensive, he concludes. The question is... How long will it take people to realize and get fed up? There you are. And a very yeah. quick, a uh, very quick uh, mm. a thing that just I just read today on, in fact, yeah. was is there is some serious concerns about kids being exposed to 3D right. way too early in their in their developmental mm-hmm. that it could actually damage their eyes or their ability to see properly 
later in life. And wow. it's an early study that they're starting to look at, but the the, er, the results so far are, yeah, you probably want to keep your kids away from this, the, the 3D thing because it could really screw them up later on in life. Like wow. everything else that's for the children, you it's know what? Really not Just actually shut good the for hell them. up until you, you get done with the science <laughs> and then reveal your findings. Yeah, well. And by the way, we'll have the link for that full story yes. in right. the show notes. So over the years, Mr. Potato Head has released a collective... Uh, version of the popular you know mm-hmm. childhood tie-ins and of course now we have one with a sci-fi collector in mind mm-hmm. fans of a galaxy far far away have been treated of course to darth vader and a stormtrooper version and even a darth maul version now mr potato head is looking to embrace a new set of genre fans those who are of the final frontier mm-hmm. version really mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Later this year, the popular toy line will release a series of Star Trek tie-in potato heads collectibles, starring the first and still the best, as Hickerson says, <laughs> he's <laughs> Hickerson here, <laughs> captain of the Starship Enterprise, James D. Kirk. The first round of releases will see Kirk uh, going potato as well as his Klingon nemesis core from an errand. Oh. I'm going uh, potato. Mem- yes. <laughs> they really need to do that with Captain Picard, though. I mean, he's bald. It oh, goes absolutely. Right to Why it. not? Yeah, right. So the toy line was unveiled the recent uh, 2011 Toy Fair, and fans of the original series need not worry. Hasbro also plans for Mr. Spock and Uhura uh, mm-hmm. in the future. Are they going to have a green chick? Oh, the Orion slave but Nobody girl? really wants a green to. potato. They've got, oh, they, yeah. they've got to have a, a Borg add-on package. Yeah, oh, just, yeah. that can, would be cool. Because you can Borg everybody. Yeah, yes. great. Uh, the so, cutest <laughs> of Borg that's potato. Right. Kirkus of Borg <laughs> potato. <laughs> <laughs> the new trick line is just part of several popular times for the upcoming year. Fans of the Wizard of Oz and the three... Stooges will also see potato head releases. The, the three Stooges? Yeah. Potato head? Why yuck, not? Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, because they can sell three of them. Right. Of course. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, of course, no word yet if there will be a Mr. Potato release in the other series from the Trek genre. Like we just said, hey, you know, Picard would be perfect. Mm-hmm. But you can bet, of course, if these ones sell well, we'll see Next Generation, Absolutely. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I'm holding out for my board potato. Version. A what? A paw wraith version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking wow. that's a we little need, niche. We need, we need the little, the little, the little, you know. Tribble. How do, I mean, you just put a big yeah. fur cozy on the potato head. You've got a tribble. Yeah. <laughs> my like, potato head has a merkin. Repurpose the merkin. It's a per- potato merkin. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, my God. You peel that. It's got to have a Captain Kirk, you know, toupee. Why you not? You Why not? Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Moving right along. <laughs> While slice of sci-fi favorite Joss Whedon will be hard at work for the next couple of months on the Avengers movies... Fans of his previous universes needn't worry that they will be neglected in the coming year. No, we won't see new entries in the Buffyverse or the universe of Dollhouse on screen, but fans will get to follow the continuing stories of each in the pages of Dark Horse Comics. Mm -hmm. Following the success of the recently wrapped Buffy Season 8 in comics, Dark Horse has acquired the comic book rights to Buffy, Angel, and Dollhouse. Wow. And Dark Horse Comics editor Scott Alley tells MTV's Splash Page that the company has big plans for all three universes on the printed page. Ooh, that's cool. Dollhouse in the comic book. Oh, right? Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Allie says that work on season nine of Buffy is currently consuming his every waking hour, and he attended a writer's summit at Whedon's home a few weeks ago to put in place the big ideas and concepts for the upcoming season. It's cool they're still involving him like that. Yeah. We also decided that we weren't going to announce anything for a while, he says. We're moving forward. Uh, we're moving forward <laughs> towards first scripts, which we expect to start rolling in by February and March. We already have a small stack of covers for the first bunch of issues, so we're moving along. I feel good that it's not yet February and we're talking about books that will launch in August and September. Hmm. He went on to say that the world of Buffy literally changed at the end of season eight and that change will carry over to season nine and to the eventual Angel line of comics. Hmm. But they're not announcing anything. Right, well, exactly. I think they're not announcing storyline, you know, like, you know, story yeah, yeah, type, yeah. you know what they're... We're chopped liver. We don't count. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Allie says that there's a five-issue miniseries planned for Dollhouse that marked a major change in the Whedon universe for us. But what about the universe of Firefly? You, Many mass. Of course. Well, there are plans for future book. development. Oh, pff, hello. Um, future developments there, they want to take their time and make sure the storylines there are done right and they know who they want writing the stories. Oh. We know we want writer Zach Whedon to write it, says Allie. I was blown away by what he did on Shepherd's Tale, and even more so on that USA Today eight-page story, Serenity Downtime. He's amazing. He only had eight pages, but he had nine characters. It's really hard to make that sing, but it was great. Yeah, wow, really very cool. Writer. Yeah, a lot of good plans there. <sighs> We don't have any extra news this week. Do we really? don't. Um, no, the snow apocalypse part two is oh, wreaking havoc. Yeah, yeah. I blame global warming. 
Well, yeah. as the yes. day after tomorrow stated, Tim, it won't get warmer, it'll get colder. Got it. Why yeah, is it you. called global warming? Well, that's a uh, that's the government for you. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so. it. anyway. Well, I think we don't have since we don't have any more news, we could do a little history. <gasps> I, I history? Did, I did, I, yeah. I did find I did find a little documentary on 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 myself. That, oh, really? Uh, oh, people might find oh, interesting. Okay. This is Dillo in Berlin with the true story of Michael R. Meningue. Young Michael spent his early years on the Nerf Ranch where he was born, but he didn't want to be a Nerf herder like his father and grandfather, so Michael ran away to join the circus. Michael loved performing in the center ring. Wearing a spangled pink tutu, he would recite poems by Emily Dickinson while juggling geese. However, Michael's primary duty with the circus was cleaning up after the animals. Young Michael fell in love with the tattooed lady, but alas, she spurned him for Thaddeus Dulcimer, a human skeleton with the sideshow. In a fit of anger, Michael grabbed Thad Dulcimer and smashed him into kindling. Then Thad Dulcimer's family was out to get even, so Mike had to run away. While in the circus, Mike had lived off a diet of scotch and hamburgers. Now that he was on his own, Michael took stock of his life and cut out the hamburgers. One morning, shortly after finishing his breakfast scotch, Michael spotted a purple dragon with pink furry feet. He took this as a sign and built the Draco Vista Studios on that very spot where the purple dragon has never been seen again, but pink elephants are a common occurrence. And Michael still does what he learned to do so well, cleaning up after the animals in the circus. In three, two, one. Rolling. He's right, I lost my purple dragon. Where'd he go? I, I don't know where he went. I laughed, I cried, <laughs> I kissed five bucks goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's my review of that show. Okay. <laughs> With the success of Disney's Alice in Wonderland last year, Hollywood studios are rushing projects with new takes on familiar fairy tales into theaters because they guess and they <laughs> want to make a bunch of money on stuff that we already know. Yeah, Later this year, we'll be seeing a new version of Little Red Riding Hood in theaters, and there are several projects centering on Snow White in developmental process. One of them is Universal Snow White and the Huntsman. An updated action movie updates on the Grimm's fairy tale Snow White and the Huntsman. Yep. It what? follows Snow White after the evil queen Ravenna calls upon Eric the Huntsman to try and kill her. Eric, who is haunted by the death of his wife by a white wolf, goes off to kill the innocent princess, but then has a change of heart. He decides to mentor her and teach her how to fight off Ravenna. You know, this can only work if Chow Yun-Fat is the hunter, Ooh, and it's directed Ooh. by uh, Yuan Yuping. Oh, there you go. Mm. <laughs> the two of them won't serve as love interest. She still has her prince, but there is a sequence in the script that calls for them to be chained together as a fight off a pair of bounty hunters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that sounds so appealing right now. And well, here's the name. You got to have ID88. This is decent though. I so think. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, the actress uh, is going to be played by uh Snow White is going to be Charlize Theron. It's, actually she's going to be Ravina. Okay. And Viggo Mortensen is uh, currently in conversation to take on the role of the Huntsman. Nope. Uh, yeah, jo- no, I buy that. No. You don't buy that? I no, totally Charlie buy and that. Fat. I'm now, telling you. Now, Johnny Depp I'm and partial Tom, to the Vigo. Tom, Tom, maybe. Tom Hardy both passed on that role. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. For other uh, title roles, Snow White, Universal has flip-flopped on who would like to play that role. The studio originally wanted to hire an unknown actor to take on the role, but then be good. was probably looking at Dakota Fanning or Sucker Punch's star Emily Browning to take the role. Uh, uh, neither one of those. So now it appears that Universal has settled on its leading lady and is actively pursuing Kristen Stewart. <laughs> How about Show Kasugi? The Twilight oh. films is the lead role. Wow. I actually think oh, I, I may have seen that she's thinking of turning it down. That's not for sure yet that <laughs> wow. she's going to be in that. Now the Snow White. We hope not. The Snow White team has made reported uh, repeated overtures to Stewart as the actress finishes work on the final installment of the Twilight Saga. Uh, oh, yeah. Breaking Dawn. Um, Stewart oh, has worked on wind. Ind- independent yeah. <laughs> features in between Breaking Films. Uh, breaks in the films of the Twilight, uh, and she accepts. Uh, if she accepts the lead in Snow White and the Huntress, it would be her first major studio vehicle in her post Twilight career. <laughs> yes, yeah, as she drives that Jeep into the the cold. Yeah, Let, let's here's to hoping there's no post Twilight career. One can hope. So, anyways, we'll keep you up to date on the uh, future developments, of course, on our website sliceofsci dot com. Okay, I'm I'm depressed. Please, please bring me up. <laughs> When the Oscar nominations were announced last week, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows got a few technical nods, but nothing in the acting or directing categories. While fans and critics have praised the work and enjoyed watching the Dan- watching Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint grow up on screen, mm-hmm. most of them associated with the franchise don't expect any kind of nods for the fantasy series next year either. 
and that's okay with Grint. We don't expect uh, it's it. It's not okay with me, though. I mean, Why? It, it's like it, if it's, it's good. for some reason, fantasy and sci-fi always get passed up in these in these things, and it's just wrong. I will say that was obviously evidenced with Inception. I think I should have got yeah, a director nod. Absolutely, yeah. somebody should have got something for that because that was a Herculean Shoot. effort. Um. So anyway, Grint's like, yeah, we don't expect it. He says this. Either way, the final movie will be huge. We did some reshoots at the end of the year. We're really going to go out with a bang. That's everyone's goal, really. It's kind of going to be pretty epic. You can totally tell he's kind of going to really, really kind of. It's kind of, yes. It would be great to see the technical team recognition. They devote their whole lives to it, he adds. However, co-star Richard Griffiths, who plays Vernon Dursley, has another take on it. It's sad it's only technical awards and not artistic yeah. ones. It's mm-hmm. the biggest movie phenomenon on the planet. I remember when E.T. was the highest earning movie of all time. 870 million. With Harry Potter, you're talking 6 billion, Griffiths says. Guys, something's going on. Why don't you honor it? Exactly. Exactly. But, but remember, though, the Oscars are not about how good a movie is, how technically uh, awesome it is, it is yeah. how, how great the acting is. It's all about whatever the people in Hollywood get, or get together and circle jerk around. Well, yeah. in a lot of ways, <laughs> no, it, it really is because right. because yeah. the, the the hardcore campaigning that happens too. Oh, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, so. no, it's 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 ridiculous. But, the politics involved here is just uh, it, it, it's it's a it's, it's a big Hollywood insider care. popularity contest. But Absolutely. very rarely do things get nominated for the big awards that aren't go- really good. I mean, it, you know, they very oh, no, rarely miss only, the boat. Uh, yeah, I mean, the okay, so years? for example, look at the maybe? Golden Globes. Look at the Golden Globes. Judy Dench was nominated for an actress award in the same category as Jennifer Love Hewitt. Mm. Okay, the Oscars haven't had something that heinous since, you know, <laughs> well, it's been a while. Well, no, but one of those deserved it. Well, Jennifer Love Hewitt, of course. Yeah, Judy Dench. come on. Well, she's yeah. awesome. I mean, she's all vejazzled and everything. Exactly. So. That's why she That's deserves why. it. Right Absolutely. there, my friend. Absolutely. It's called taking Judy, care of yourself. Judy Dench is? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay, okay. Uh, we got That's no terrifying. more news. No yeah, jazzling the M. Okay, okay. We need to move on. vejazzled? Yikes. Hello, Slicers. This is Skiznot, and these are the shows I'd rather watch than Knight Rider. First, there's Galactica 1980, and homeboys in outer space. I sang that with a straight face. Flash, Gordon, Cave, Man, Space Rangers, Auto Man, Star Cop, Small Wonder, Harry and the Hendersons, Misfits, the Science Quark, Space Breezing, Lost Sons, the Cleopatra, 25, 25, Out of this world, Planet of the Apes, I'd rather endless loop that's on for a manner of prize. I wanna be a Hilton, Walker, Texas Ranger, Cop, Rock, Cat, Walk, Joni, Love, Strachey, Golden Girls, the Nanny, Elf, Murder, Sheba, Rose, and Charles, in charge. Matt Lock, Dr. Phil, Mama's Family, Golden Palace, Labor of Love. Jake and the Fat Man, BJ and the Bear, TJ and the Hooker, Golf. These are shows I'd rather watch than Knight Rider. These are the shows I'd rather watch than Knight Rider. These are the shows I'd rather watch than Knight Rider. Before I go blind. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Well, I'm kind of glad that Knight Rider died. I mean, you know, well, that, that, uh, it was bad. Considering the theme of today's show, I f- felt that was very appropriate. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I would rather watch than the stuff that seems to be coming out lately. Yeah. So, Boy, there we go. Oh, okay, let's do a little TV talk. Though. Okay. So, for six years, Carlton Cuse worked as head producer and writer for ABC series Lost. Now, for the first time in six years, the winter season is kicking to high gear, and Cuse isn't breaking a new season for her sh- for a show anywhere. So, that doesn't mean the series has been lost and public consciousness or questions about it don't get posed to him. So, in a recent New York Times editorial, Q said that while hiking in the Swiss Alps, Sam, did you see him last summer? I didn't. I wish I had. Uh, wow. Hey, with his daughter, he was recognized by another hiker as one of the creators of Lost. He found your toenail. I was going to say <laughs> it's entirely possible. <laughs> Actually, that fell after off verifying that the toenail was indeed dead, uh, he's using it for his next show. <laughs> it turned black in the Alps. It only fell off in the U.S. Oh, okay. Let's okay. Be clear. Uh, so, after verifying verifying who he was, the hiker proceeded to ask him, "Why did you not explain the polar bear?" Which 
which we've all asked Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Where is that? As he detailed his own theory of how polar bears ended up in the tropical jungle on Lost, my daughter rolled her eyes, he writes. Even here in this remote spot, I cannot escape the last six years of my life. <laughs> Q said he was trying to get somewhere far away to clear his mind and recharge a bit after working on a series. <laughs> that is, he had as many 15 characters at one time, and they found that there's a big difference between getting away and leaving that show behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I eventually realized that there was never going to be a definitive conclusion to the experience of Lost. The conclusion was going to be as ambiguous as the ending of the series itself, he said. Mm Mm-hmm. But what is Q's looking to do next, you ask? What is Q's looking to do next, Brian? First, he said he wanted to spend time with his family reconnecting. Yeah, duh. And counting his lots and lots of money. Yeah, he said he also wanted to begin to enjoy watching TV again since he was removed from the process of bringing the narrative to life on screen and could simply enjoy shows for a change. He also said he began to whittle down a pile of books he wanted to, to read but had set aside due to the rigors of producing at least 24 hours 25 hours of Lost each year. Imagine that. Wow. So what's next for him? Q said he's getting calls and he has a few new ideas. He worked on the attempt to bring Stephen King's uh, Under the Dome to the screen, but said it didn't work out for a variety of reasons. Another series that came his way was a detective team of a man and a ghost. Okay. Mm. Mm. So, but for now, he's looking to do something a little less genre. He writes that he's working with Randall Wallace on a new project about American Civil War. Interesting. Together, we built the story Point of Honor, which is the simplest form about a journey in a Confederate family in Virginia through the turmoil of the Civil War. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was a reality show. (laughs) No. (laughs) Civil War reenactors. No, no, no. Following the family. Reenactor nothing. (laughs) While it's vastly different from Lost, it feels no less compelling. And while he knows that anything he does from this point on will be compared to Lost, he says he's looking forward to new challenges and telling new stories to the audience. Okay. So I thought that's kind of cool. Sure. So where does a polar bear fit in a Civil War drama? It's a good question, actually. How did it get there? Exactly. Is it wearing gray or blue? I mean, if you've got the guy cornered on the Alps, that's the question you ask him, because that was answered in the show. Was it? Sort of. Well, vaguely. They had Sawyer in a bear cage. Yeah, but why were they there? Well, they were studying them Dharma. Okay, sure. Because okay. the, the gotcha. hippies studied weird stuff like that. I mean, oh, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> there was a bear cage. Somebody fired up a spliff and said, it needs to have polar bears around Pretty here. Much, I yeah. mean, Sawyer spent time figuring out how to get it to release the fish biscuit for the bears, right? <laughs> Remember? Uh, so okay, sure. Fish biscuit. Fish biscuits. He actually ate a fish biscuit. They um, stole my band name. Yeah, fish biscuit. Oh, Sue that's epic. <laughs> All right. With the stellar ratings of The Walking Dead delivered last fall for AMC, it should be no surprise that zombies are a that's a future talk. You want to cut that. Damn it. I do. Yes. Wow. We haven't had an edit in this show for a long time. Wow. Okay, <laughs> Congratulations so. for the new edit. All righty. Okay. So, so we just have that one story then. Yeah, that's it. And then we have a couple good future they, talks. The, the, so. Hang on. I don't know where. Uh, let me see here. Yes. Um, <laughs> that was it for TV talk. Was that it? Yeah, that was yep. it. <laughs> okay. They, the the gotcha. hippies studied weird stuff like that. I mean, oh, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> there was a it's bear be. cave. <laughs> All right. With the stellar ratings of the walk. Okay. That's it right there. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Excuse me. Stole my band name. Yeah, Fish Biscuit. Oh, that's epic. Okay, and... All right, so we got a few minutes to chat a little bit. bit. Yeah. um, I think we should probably talk some about what's going on with TV. Okay. So, okay. so the cape got yeah. its season shortened. shortened. Yes, oh, I did? saw yes. that, and I was really sad about From that. From 13 to 10, and they're filming 10 right now, so when they're done filming 10, they're just going to wrap and cross and their hope, fingers. And cross their fingers. Boy, go out and watch that show, because it's I getting like it. good. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. I'm, I'm an episode behind. I, no, that's not true. I saw one, two, and four. I'm still finding it pretty disjointed. Yeah. yeah, it, it is, is still a little, it's bit. Still a little the, off, but yeah. I, I find the whole family thing that goes on whenever they cut to the mother and the son. I just, fast forward mm. through those. They bore the crap out of me. It's not yeah. that they bore me. It turns around and the show's got that real good, you know, root for the hero comic book feel. And then they flash to them and it's like, oh, God. Yeah, I keep slash my wrist now. I'm I'm I keep hoping and I keep waiting for that story to start stepping up and it's taking too long to get into. I keep waiting for it to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah going away wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. No, yeah. I dig. Ch- I dig uh, Sarah's hair and Chuck. Yeah, black. Wolf. Did you did you see this week's show? Yeah, have you seen this? No, I've watched this week. It was, it was oh, okay. their mid season finale again. They thought they were maybe going to only have thirteen episodes, so they wrap up some stuff. 
Um, and it was a really good oh show this God, week. I loved it. it. I missed it. Loved okay, it. I haven't seen it. So. I had I had two almost snort laugh moments. One involves uh, Morgan. Jeffster. And Mo- first one was Morgan, and, and the even was, better one yeah, was Jeffster. Was Jeffster. <laughs> I'm really I'm going to go buy myself a Jeffster T-shirt from the official NBC site. Is it I, NBC? Because I, I yeah. dude, they have to they have to get an album out of this. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. How those actors do that shit with a straight face, I'll never know. (laughs) Oh, it's like the episode where where the girl's coming to to, uh, meet uh, meet him, and he's, and, uh, (gasps) you know, he decides he's going to show himself, and it's these things. Yeah. Yeah. Just some of the Jeffster moments are probably the best ones. Oh, yeah. Wow, it I mean, was, they're yeah. the best characters, yes. and 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 oh my God, can we talk about Fringe? <gasps> oh, yeah. and wow. its ratings are doing pretty good on Friday. I yeah. mean, don't rest easy. Still, no, like, we, get we, we everybody a, you know to watch it. Would we have a, got we a story Fringe on. story? Okay. So we do have a little bit. So, but it's getting so good. Yeah, yes. it, it really is. I mean, this this last this episode, episode with was, Peter was oh wow, I could yeah. not believe that. And I called it. I called it at the first. It's like oh, it's got to be, and it was yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not with trying not to do spoilers here, yeah. but but yeah. wow, and, and, is still awesome. but the way they actually explained it at the end, I was just in love with that. It was like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Something, yeah. something, mm-hmm. something Fringe, really freaky happened there. Yeah, yes. Fringe is always the first that I watch. Mm-hmm. Me too. So uh, everything else, I'm that's why I'm always usually about a week behind. Yeah. So. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, there's there's still some good TV on TV, and I'm happy to say that uh, I've got things to watch. How about V? Um, uh, I, it's it's still a glorious mess. I like the parts of it. Yeah, it is messy. I haven't it, watched this week, so yeah, it's still messy. I mean, it's there. Uh, Jane yeah. Badler is still fun, like especially uh, oh, this week. I, I love I love <laughs> but, that. I love what's happening on the ship, and I love uh, I, I love that interaction between mm-hmm. uh, um, Bakran and it's the anti V forces that are the worst part. I will tell you, Absolutely. the priest and the kid, I have no use for none. I I they they annoy me in mm-hmm. many different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, Tyler needs to have a, uh, an industrial accent. I like the yeah. introduction of Eli Cohen. Oded Fair is cool, mm-hmm. and I think it's interesting what he could bring there. And, you know, mm-hmm. because he has really a different All right. ethical I want more and moral Joshua. compass. I want yeah. More Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, I I, I, th- I think some of the resistance needs to die yes. and be replaced with some new, new resistance. resistance. Yes, yeah. please, absolutely. With big huevos rancheros. <laughs> That's where these guys failed. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, we're not failing for you, and we'll be back to do more right after this. Absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. Do, do, do. That's done. That's done. And well, since I haven't got a new promo for them, I guess I'm running this. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what was, <sighs> how do you spell his name? Or, or, uh, Q, Glenn G L E N N, Glenn G L E N N. Okay. Hetrick H E T R I C K. I C K. Face off. Okay. Yes, that show actually is kind of fun. Looks good. I yeah. kept meaning to watch it and I didn't, but the um, commercials are interesting. I, yeah. I thought I when I saw the commercials, I thought, shit, sci-fi, you finally hit something that's like right in your wheelhouse. That's Absolutely. a great idea for a reality show yeah. for a network like you. Uh-huh. Well, and it sounds cool. I mean, the interview yeah, and cool. the concept behind it, it sounds really like they might have got something here. Nice. It's not uh, <clears throat> fear factor or fear whatever the hell that oh, thing that, was. Oh, um, the, the, the fear house or whatever the hell yeah, it was. That, yeah, that horrendous, I actually, I massive kind of, mess. I actually kind of enjoyed that, mostly because they shocked people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, scare just, tactics. That's scare tactics. Scare yeah. tactics. No, no, no. I'm not thinking scare tactics. I was oh. thinking the one where you went in and, and you grabbed all the money and stuff and you had to get out of there. Oh, no, no, not that one. Oh. I, I was talking scare tactics. That was, was just like Manic stupid. Mansion or something like that. Manic Mansion, that's the one. Whatever the yeah. hell it was. I like that. Really? Mm. It was fun. Yeah, because the guy was just a total jerk, and all of the 
all of the games were intentionally made to go in there and the more the more money you were trying to grab the more painful whatever the hell you were trying to touch or take it from was hmm. huh. so like one of them you'd go through and you were in this in this water in the garden and the entire thing was strung around with electric fences so in order to get the most money from the interior of the thing you had to climb through all these hot wire fences and all that kind of stuff to get the hundred dollar bills and I just, the sadist in me just loved that. Yeah. Okay. I prefer the reality television where it's just like um, talent or art or something. So that's why I like the, yeah, see, this the makeup a, things where mm-hmm. people are yeah. just there. You're showing what they can do. Yeah, like, this you know, totally a game show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Game show. Okay. Let's finish this up. Here we go. Take three. All righty, and wrapping things up here on Slice of Sci-Fi, let's talk about the future. With the stellar ratings The Walking Dead delivered last fall for AMC, it should be no surprise that zombies are a hot property in <laughs> well, Hollywood. Of course they but are. But rapidly cooling, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, not before a bunch of stuff hits us. This fall, the CW hopes to have the undead rising to feast on brains and also to bring in some of the audience left hungering for more as we patiently wait for season two of Dead to hit screens in October. The CW? Okay. The CW, the network, is looking into a new series called Awakening. The hour-long show would follow in the footsteps of Supernatural and the Vampire Diaries, reports TV Guide. At least they didn't say Smallville. (laughs) Bringing a hot genre property to the CW's younger demographic audience. Of course. The series Mm. follows two sisters who face off against one another just as a zombie uprising begins. Oh my god, that zombie stole my mascara. <laughs> and of course, it should be said that since it's a CW show, the zombies would be some of the most photogenic zombies uh, ever seen on television. You know, that, that actually kind of sounds like Day of the Comet. It does, kind of, yeah. Huh. You're right. Without the bad hair. And the 80s Without music. Without the 80s and, hair, yeah. yeah. The 80s music. Bring back the 80s music. And the rocker was it boots. Night of the Comet? Night what, of the Comet, Night yeah. of the Comet, was it? Yeah, yeah Night, Night, of, the Night of, the of the Comet. Okay, then I know what you're talking about, and that's and, hilarious. I actually own it. Yeah. It's, a great movie. it's, a great movie, it's sort of an 80s yeah. cheesy classic uh, it like, truly is yeah <laughs> um the idea for this series comes from william lauren and glenn davis who have worked on the listener and missing the concept was brought to the Revely production company who sold the idea to warner brothers at the time of this report the cw was still considering whether or not to give the green light to a pilot and awakening isn't the only undead show that could hit our, um, the, yeah. our TVs next fall. Okay. NBC is reportedly pursuing a project that would combine the brain-eating undead with blood-sucking undead in Zombies vs. Vampires. I wonder what that show's about. Uh, hmm. The show features the Hollywood pedigree of McG as a producer, and I gotta say, I hate him in movies. I TV like him in TV. You it's know, all, it's if, all about flower arranging. You know, <laughs> you know, you're familiar with the uh, zombie with an X, the yeah. the, the yeah, series yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, zombie with an X, the guy, yeah. where the zombie is actually kind of aware, and yeah. he's he's not he's just not just an idiot, Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. That kind of a zombie versus vampire could be very cool. Well, kind of, zombie was kind of like that, really. When it, you think it, about it, yeah. it was, it was. But the thing is, is that uh, if you had a zombie like that, that would basically be immune to what is what a vampire could do to you mm-hmm. they'd be kind of like uh congress yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. thanks wow. for bringing that element to the show tim <laughs> wow i say we ban tim from the island jeez yeah. okay anyway hey, let's talk on. about fringe okay oh, let, yes let's have some so while many of us were initially upset that Fox decided to move Fringe to Friday evenings, it appears enough fans are following it live to help keep the ratings up. Good, good. Last week, we brought you news from the producer, J.J. Abrams, about the show's prospect for Fridays and why he's glad the series moved away from the standalone mystery of the week to the mythology-driven characters that many of us know and love. Mm-hmm. And the good news is, so far, the move appears to be paying off. Ratings are solid on Fridays, and good. last week's TV columnist, Michael Osiello, reported the series has a solid chance of getting a renewal notice for season four. Excellent. Yeah. That doesn't mean, however, we should rest on our laurels. No No. No. laurel resting, people. So keep watching. Rest on your couches on Friday night. (laughs) Watching the show. And converting people to watch Make sure that you leave your TV on, tune to that channel while you go out and party with your friends. It watches Fringe on Friday night or it gets the (laughs) hose. That's right. Until then, fans will have to look forward to season three. And actress Jessica Jessica Nichols, who plays Astrid, uh, reveals that the visitors from the alternate universe will be crossing over to ours on a more regular basis. Interesting. 
You're going to start seeing them in our universe for the first time, she tells us to New York Post. We've seen it the other way, but it's going to start happening the other way around pretty soon. It's limitless. I'm assuming if there are two worlds, then there are an unlimited number of of worlds. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying a while mm-hmm. ago. Is it's, right. okay? This can't be the only oh, no. universe. Yeah. Then it's just the one they uh, tapped into. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to be careful, though. You don't want it to go the way of sliders. Correct. Oh. No. She also says the alternate Astrid, who is autistic, will get some greater exploration as season three continues. Has her character evolved or what? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, she started out just kind of like background wallpaper, but she was still cool. Really she was still yeah. awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, and that that a little bit of awesome has really brought her. Well, Forward. And the alternate Astrid is really cool. I thought, yeah, I thought mm-hmm. so. And she too. said that she hinted we'll see more of what makes the alternate Astrid tick, and that we'll see a bit more of her emotional side in the cool. future as well. And then, of course, the show could be looking into delving into time travel. Uh, mm. Well, you know what? I, I have faith in the way these guys are writing, though. Right. I mean, I really do. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think they've they earned can some credibility it. for me, at least a Absolutely. little bit of leeway. She said, What would it mean if someone's come back from the past who's passed away? It makes me think that this might be coming up in future shows, but I don't know for sure. So she's wow. obviously yeah. be dragons, she's speculating. Man. Yeah. So of course, Fringe airs on Friday nights on Fox, mm-hmm. folks. So yes. Ooh, good it's stuff. A great it, show. It, it it truly truly is. And if you have not watched this show, shame on you. Catch up because it's on Netflix. Yeah. It's available out there. Go get the seasons and get caught up. All right. And give season one. A little bit of the leeway. Yeah, it takes yeah. a little time, to which get rolling. is why we're we're still giving the cape some time here because mm-hmm. it, uh, it, it, it you got to give some of these shows time to warm up. I love the carnival of crime. I oh, do too. It's the best part of the show. Yes, it is. It yes. really yeah. is. Keith David, man, he's <sighs> fantastic. And it is. It's got a cheesy camp to it. That's just a lot of <laughs> yeah. fun. I mean, it, it reminds <laughs> well, me a lot of Chuck. Well, and I said that, and I said this to somebody. I said you really have to have the proper mindset yes. to watch that show. Mm-hmm. You just need to go. Okay, there's going to be. No basis in reality. No. And just kind of go with the flow. I'm okay. going to watch a comic book. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just kind of eat it at that and just go, yeah, it's going to be cheese and it's going to be Silver Age and yeah, okay, cool. And very I quickly, still, uh, well, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I still want my comic books to be smart and have um, interesting characters with depth. Yeah. There's there's there's, there's a space that. for that, but I'm this is not, the show is not that. Mm-hmm. So you just need to understand that. So very quickly before we have we completely are running out of time here, right. I do want to talk about God, um, Spartacus, uh, Gods of the Arena. Um, oh yeah, I was not watching. I was really really concerned about this show when it came back with the first episode because it was like, oh my god, they tried to cram so much stuff into that first episode. I was like, I watched the first season entirely and I was lost. Well, it's a prequel, isn't it? It's a prequel, yes. yeah. absolutely. But they really jump us in hard. Um, yeah. But man, it this the last episode just turned it all around. It's phenomenal. Really, really well done. It is not everybody's cup of tea. I guarantee you, this is not a show for everyone. And see, since I've already kind of missed it, I figured I'll just catch it up on DVD. And, uh, so it, it it is definitely not for everyone. I I, I cannot stress that Spartacus enough. But, wasn't for everyone either, though. Mm-hmm. Really. But I mean, it, it's got that three hundred over the top graphic esque. It's got some incredible nudity. story. It's got a lot of nudity. Oh, yeah. It's got a lot the of The sex very, and the violence. Hello. The sex and the violence, but it is very period. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's truly, that was what Rome was about. So, I mean, they they really got it. But, man, I'll tell you what, the story and the way that they're telling this is phenomenal. It really, really is. So, just wanted to cover that. Take us out, Sam. If you're only tuning into the Slice of Sci-Fi podcast, you're missing out on three quarters of the fun. Mm -hmm. We've got our weekly voicemail show where you can comment on us commenting about your comments. And we're also out there on the social networks. You can find us on the Twitters, the Facebook, and in Second Life. And that does not even include the Slice of Sci-Fi news feed, which you need to be on and reading. And the video. If you're missing out on any of them, you are missing out. So find a way and connect with us today. Oh, it rhymes. Thank you, Hickerson. Because if you don't, Brian may have to do something mm. drastic. <laughs> and none of, <laughs> none of us want that. Not no. the thong. N- no. Ooh. Oh, I was thinking about breaking legs, but okay, cool. The thong's good, even easier. <laughs> <laughs> thong, yeah. thong, not for those thong, of us thong, that have to look thong, at it. Thong, thong. Not, yeah. the, not the pink one. No, 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 no lime, lime green. green. Lime, lime green. green. Lime, lime green. green. And the glitter. That's his fallback. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, Pink thanks so much for tuning yeah. in, folks. Yeah. It was a lot yeah, of fun, and we've got a lot more shows oh, coming up. We're not done. Yeah, you know, <laughs> see you next week. It's the
<laughs> the dazzled lime green thong. 